Sheer Strength Part 2. The shear box test is used to determine the shear strength parameters C dash, the cohesion, and phi dash, the angle of friction, mentioned in the previous video. On the left is a photograph of the split box, which forms part of the apparatus. A sample is placed in the shear box, and a shear force is applied so that one half of the box moves relative to the other. This generates a plane of shear along the centre line as you can see from the tested clay specimen on the right. The shear stress along the plane is tau and the normal stress is sigma n. This photograph shows where the split box fits into the overall apparatus. <coughs> the normal stress sigma n is applied by adding weights to the hanger as shown. The vertical displacement of the lid of the shear box can be measured by a dial gauge during shearing. This device is called a proving ring, which is calibrated so that its deflection can be used to calculate the horizontal or shear force applied to the sample. The test results can be plotted in the form shear stress against shear strain, as shown in the top graph and volumetric strain against shear strain as shown in the second graph. Usually it's sufficient to plot horizontal displacement instead of shear strain and vertical displacement instead of volumetric strain as shown. <coughs> the shearing behaviour of a soil depends upon its initial density. In the top plot, the upper curve is for a dense soil while the lower curve is for a loose soil. In a dense soil, the particles are packed closely together to begin with, and a lot of energy is expended in overcoming the interlocking. This explains the stiff initial response. For the particles to shear effectively, they must move apart, which explains the corresponding increase in volume in the second plot. This increase in volume experienced by dense soils is known in soil mechanics as dilation. A soil that is initially loose will not require as much energy for shearing to take place. Therefore, the stress strain response in the top plot is softer. The particles actually come together to shear, resulting in a reduction in volume or compression as shown in the second plot. The peak strength for the dense soil in the upper plot, point P, corresponds to the point at which the rate of dilation is at its maximum in the lower plot. With further strain, the dilation effect reduces and an ultimate or critical state shear strength is reached, point C. Loose soils do not have peak strengths, but reach the same critical state shear strength. Once the critical state is reached, no further volume change occurs. The information in the second plot can be represented in an alternative way in the third plot, a void ratio against shear strain. Regardless of the initial void ratio, the same void ratio is reached at critical state for any one value of normal stress. It is important to say that all test results shown here will depend upon the normal stress applied in the shear box test. We've all strolled along a beach and noticed that as we step on damp sand, it dries immediately around our feet and then gets damp again as we move away. See, can you explain this phenomenon in the light of the explanation on the previous slide? In order to determine the shear strength parameters C dash and phi dash, we normally conduct a few shear box tests typically three, at different normal stresses. We plot peak and critical state shear strength against normal stress, and then draw the best fit tangent to each set. 
it's very important to distinguish between peak friction angles and critical state friction angles. The one we choose in design depends on how much strain we anticipate. For example, we might use a peak friction angle for a retaining wall design, whereas a critical state friction angle might be more suitable for a slope stability problem. Bear in mind that any value of C dash interpreted from your shear box tests is unlikely to represent real cohesion unless a stiff clay is being tested. <clears throat> Finally, the shear box has a number of limitations you need to be aware of. First of all, there is no facility to measure pore pressures within the sample. So we need to ensure that the pore pressures are zero so that the normal total and effective stresses are the same. This is achieved by shearing at a slow rate appropriate to the soil type. The area under shear and vertical loads does not remain constant throughout the test. Only an approximation to the state of pure shear is produced in the shear box specimen. The shear stresses on the failure plane are not uniform and the shearing plane is predefined anyway. More advanced shear strength testing requires the use of an alternative test called the triaxial test.